men's ego, legacy, whatever is a, and I think the abundance of sperm versus the, um, the scarcity of eggs is a testament to that. So again, I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying if we're, if we're starting this conversation from an understanding of the unique differences in our biology and our code. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just wanna build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I wanna keep it real with you. I wanna live better, eat better. I wanna love better, sleep better. Yeah, I wanna feel so aligned. Women be saying some, they be saying some off the wall. Some of them say some, some nah, crazy stuff. Nah, that, like, even if I felt that way, I don't know that I would say that on that's camera. Mid. I'm also a good, a good uh, uh, excavator of truth. Uh, so you think that's, that's on you? Is it like, is it just these women in particular or do you think it's you that is bringing this out of them? I want to be humble, I do. You can be honest, Alan. You don't have to be humble. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cause it could be both, or it could be you. I was I was watching something today. Um, it was a clip of uh, his. I think he was a civil rights activist, but he was talking about the irony of black people adopting individualism mm. and this idea that we're all unique and we're all different and we're all special. And he was talking about how, you know, if that was the case, why do um, millions and millions of black people buy Cokes, millions and millions of black people buy Nikes? Mm -hmm. At the time, they didn't have Yeezys or whatever, so mm. he couldn't bring that up. But basically, he was making the argument that we're a lot more similar than we realize. We're a lot more of a monolith. Mm -hmm. that we like to let on. We're just monolithic in un unproductive, even counterproductive ways. Yeah. Um, and similarly, the women that I've had the pleasure of interviewing are literally a reflection. Of you? Of, no, no. Oh. Of, of what's in the world. Oh, okay. Of the world. Okay. Right? Like, um, they're not extremes they're not only fan girls or mm. ig models or ex strippers they're not these extremes they're just regular everyday people um so to answer your question i think i think it has a lot to do with my and i say this humbly with my ability to get get the the truth and interrogate <laughs> the 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 inconsistencies to then get to the truth, but I, I don't. There's no. There's no woman that I've interviewed so far that I would say deviates so far from the norm. Not one. Even the ones that you might assume do, she's not that different, bro. That's interesting, then, because that would that to me implies that at least the perception of the majority of women is different than what I perceive the majority of women to be. Absolutely. Because you're looking at them through a different lens. Like one of the common rebuttals that I get sometimes, and you've used this on a number of occasions. What? My friends aren't like that. Yeah. I don't know anybody like that. Where do you find these women? Um, now, again, even that response is ununique. It's it's un. Um, it's uninteresting because I've heard it a lot. A lot of men have heard it. Um, but what that tells me is that we are looking at different metrics of evaluation. So similarly, like, you know, you um, interrogate any female friend group, they're going to tell you that every girl in my group or most girls in my groups are would be great partners. And I don't understand why Shirley doesn't have a man or Bertha doesn't have a man. Well... That's because you're evaluating her like you would evaluate a man. So she would be a great man. But again, in a world where men have a different curriculum and our expectations of women, you cannot see through the lens of a male's curriculum why she's not a good woman to a man because she would be such a good man if she was a man. So in your head, are women in two categories? Like, or, okay, I don't want to project that onto you. 
what categories do you put women in? Because obviously yeah. not all women are the same. Sure. In my head, I have an idea of two categories that I would think men separate women out into. But what categories do you think men um, categorize women into? How do you guys sort them? <laughs> How do we sort them? Um, I, I wish I had a clean answer, but I don't. I don't have like a Kevin Samuels. Yeah. Well, you got the one and the big. No, I don't. I don't have. I don't. I don't have that big. Yeah, maybe one day I'm gonna sit down and really. That'd be a good <laughs> really, one. Really has to shit out. It's a good framework to go by. I I, 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 would, I would say if I had to say two categories, it'd be women you play with versus women you take serious. Okay, because I was gonna say like wives and then. Yeah. Yeah. Play yeah. Things. Okay. Um. Yeah. So if I was to be just completely simple, I would put it into those two categories. However, um, um, those lines could be blurry at times, especially for young men. Because mm-hmm. number one, they might not be ready to be husbands. And yeah. number two, they, don't, they might not have the insider experience to be able to differentiate the two. Right. And women are... What is not unique about women is that women are really good at playing each of those parts, regardless of the... Uh, depending on the occasion. So you can never tell. Um, Because she could be a plaything for man number one and be a wife for man number two. I think that's a good point. I think the same applies to men because I I saw something, and I've thought about this before on my own as well, that a man, even if you've dated the same man as Crystal over here, you and Crystal may have gotten two completely different men because based on how he sees you and when you got him in his life, mm-hmm. your experience may be completely different mm-hmm. with that same man. In as much as I do think men have range, mm-hmm. um, women's range dwarfs men's. I will say that. And, 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 and I, I think just, you know, based on women's nature, mm-hmm. you know, like there are a lot more dimensions uh, and even the possibility of additional dimensions with women, just based on your nature, mm-hmm. um, that I don't know, I'm not going to say men don't have, but I don't know if we have or we appreciate. Because not only do you have dimensions and range of dimension, you also have an appreciation, which even creates more dimensions. Mm-hmm. Um, so the difference between the guy, I mean, the girl guy A got and guy B got, I think is completely different. Like it could be literally two different women than the difference between woman A got versus woman B got. Men tend to not be that. We might pivot a little bit, you might turn a little bit, but women can literally become a different person. Even, even I mean, even, even literally, like niggas been going to the same barber for years. Women change her hair every two days. You know what I'm saying? And the, you, even the, the viral thing you see on Instagram sometimes, he, he wants to see multiple uh-huh. women. Then you see the woman change her wig yeah. and her hair and be, literally become multiple women. And there's an appreciation and the celebration of um, women's ability to do that. So That's I think why it's, it's so weird to me that in all other areas, men seem to value consistency except when it comes to women. Because again... Our That's crazy. Pro- That's crazy. And this is why I have to start every single conversation, every single argument with biology. Because I think the the you know going back to the whole nature versus nurture thing, I think the modern world has convinced us that um, nurture dwarfs nature. There's but, an argument about that. But but yeah. nature is fucking powerful. And again, like I said, the, the biological incentive for men is not monogamy. Not saying that there's something wrong with monogamy, not saying that monogamy is not the right way to go, but biologically, our programming, our, our source code is not one woman. That just feels like, it. I'm going to be honest, it feels like an excuse. I understand that. <laughs> and the reason why is because humans in general are hard- hardwired towards pleasure just across the board. So the same way how I can say... I can do that with anything that would provide me pleasure. But the drive isn't a pleasure drive. What is it? 
it's um <laughs> it's 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 a drive to spread our seed at okay. the core so then now the pleasure i think is a veneer it's the vehicle uh-huh. but at the core it's the like if if it was the father abraham had many sons uh the the, the attila the hun everybody has like a little bit of his dna like men's ego legacy whatever is a and i think the abundance of sperm versus the um the scarcity of eggs is a testament to that so again i'm not saying it's right i'm just saying if we're if we're starting this conversation from an understanding of the unique differences in our biology and our code mm-hmm. not to excuse our behavior when men Cuz men cheat. are using that as an excuse. Yeah, I don't think it's an excuse. I don't think there I don't think it's an excuse. There are some men I, I, I hear agree. that it's like well biologically this yeah. is the way that we are so like I, it, I agree. No, I, but I, it I, does diminish the impact or the influence of self-control of no it's just like even you know as much as a woman's menstrual cycle mm-hmm. explains her moodiness and her fluctuation in temperament and the whole nine it's not an excuse for the right age. that's what i'm saying it's like but if if i understand that that's where you're starting from you're on your period you're ovulating whatever the case may be I can better empathize with our with with your disposition and with our uh, interaction mm-hmm. versus if I'm having masculine expectations and you'll be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> so so what I'm telling women is similar to how I've never experienced a period, right. a cramp, a fucking ovulation, right. but I'm I empathize. Okay. And I don't excuse your bad behavior, but I start the conversation differently. Versus if you were do, I'd probably punch you in the face. Similarly, not to excuse men's bad behavior or men's irresponsibility. I'm not. I don't think men should be irresponsible with our with our dicks. Mm-hmm. But it would help the conversation along if we can start it with understanding that you've never had a period before, you've never had this level of testosterone before, you've never had 15 million on the low end potential people swimming in you at any given moment before. So, what would that sympathizing look like? Ideally, from women. Um, it would it would look like you know, um, number one, not being so critical of the young dudes who don't want to settle down. Okay. Uh, because again, what's going on in your anatomy at twenty four versus what's going on in his at twenty four completely different. But if you have those same expectations, be like, I'm ready to be a wife. Why aren't you ready to be a husband? No, it's not the same. Also, um, for me, it's, it really just boils down to uh, a better appreciation of what, just like I said, like, um, I because I understand the menstrual cycle and how that could affect you physically and mentally in the whole night. I have more of an appreciation of what it means to just be a woman. Okay. The battles, the demons, that what it is to be a woman. Mm-hmm. I think similarly, um, just like Warren Farrell says, like men keeping that demon of just being out here and throwing your dick around at mm-hmm. bay. I think if women had more of an appreciation of that, like not to say thank you for not cheating on me, baby. But it sounds like no, not not <laughs> not, not not to say that, but just just uh, I appreciate that nigga. Mm-hmm. Just, 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 just an acknowledgement that you know. I understand his heart. I, I understand what he's going through. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because it, it is something. Because it's easier to dismiss, similar to the the period example. It's easier to ex- dismiss if you've never experienced it. Mm-hmm. But if you've experienced it, you have more of an appreciation of how how good this man actually is. What it means for him to be faithful. Okay, so that that brings me, I think, maybe to my last question here. So if men understand, as they love to point out, this biological difference and this drive, sure. should that not dictate or change maybe the way that they interact with women? Because what that feels like is a lot of men are choosing to play with fire. If they know that they're biologically conditioned and predisposed to act in this way and spread this seed, but then still wanting to entertain women, even on like a friend level and this platonic th- thing that I have a question about whether or not you believe that that's a thing. 
But shouldn't men then with that in, in mind change their behavior so that these I don't think women, most men have it in mind. I don't, but I don't they so. are quick to yell out. We're, we're biologically different. We yeah, are men who know. <laughs> but I don't think most men, I don't think 18 year olds know. I think they're just horny and they like just want to stick their dick in something. But I don't think they really um, can understand the etymology of where that comes from or the, the, the dissect what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, now, some men are able to understand that and articulate that. And some are even irresponsible with that. Um, now, you know, I think, you know, as a man, part of success in anything is, is gaining knowledge, mm -hmm. whether gaining knowledge of self, get, gaining knowledge of the market, mm -hmm. gaining knowledge of the zeitgeist. You know, white folks would say uh, he has his finger on the pulse. Right. He has his ear to the ground. Yeah. I think it's probably African who would say that part. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but I think as, as you develop as a man, you... you um, you learn these things. Um, however, it's it's still it's still a. I wish life had clean lines. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, you know you'll you'll hear women say, "Yeah, just tell me the truth. Mm -hmm. um, if you just want me for sex, just tell me that." And then you tell her, and she'll block you, right? Uh, which, yeah, it makes sense. However, you say that like that's a problem. Like, no, 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 I told I'm you not, to tell I'm, me the truth, and I did. And no, I'm no, 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 I'm not. I, I'm not. I'm not saying that's a problem. I'm saying if I was 18 years old, I'd lie my fucking ass off. But there are women if who I don't was 16, care. If I was 18, 17, <laughs> 19, I'm not taking that risk, lady. I'm not taking that risk. So similarly. Um, we have to empathize with the young boys too. <laughs> that feels very manipulative. Absolutely, I want some pussy. That's I'm, a problem. I'm seven, I agree. <laughs> Again, I, I started this by saying there are no clean lines. That's why I, I completely that. agree. However, from the perspective of a 16 year old boy, mm -hmm. of a 17 year old boy, of an 18 year old boy who can't even articulate his urges and his drive, yeah, I'm gonna take the path of least resistance. And also, I do, I do want to love you. I do want to. No, no. I want to. No, 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 no. Let me let me rephrase that. Let me rephrase that. I want to want to. All right, but you don't. Those two things seem like the same thing. If you if you don't have the level of self awareness to make that distinction, but similarly, like you know, you, you, you a lot of women that I listen to say they want to be married, mm -hmm. and after having a conversation with them, I realize no, she wants to want to be married. She wants a wedding. She doesn't want 40 years. Mm -hmm. Now, again, these are grown women who can't make that distinction. Some young men can't make this distinction. And men know that they don't want that girl. Like, I'm no, we're not about to do that right here. Year olds. <laughs> I'm talking 18 year olds. These people are not. No, 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 no. So that makes me feel like we need to we need to instill better morals and values in our young boys. What? Because if we are saying Okay, he knows that if he tells her the truth that she won't want to do it, mm -hmm. then that's a problem. And so then he I takes agree. the deceptive route to get her to do it. Mm -hmm. That's not setting him up for a good future. I agree. Or her. I agree. What I'm saying to you, though, is <laughs> number one, um, we can't have if, if we really want to act, you know, actualize change, we can't have the same. Uh, self-aware expectations of other people as we have reached. The vast majority of people are not as self-aware, this self-aware. They're not. That's the truth. And the vast majority of people take the path of least resistance. So what I'm saying is if we're really going to actualize change, um, we can't stand on top of this hill and say, come up here. We have to go down and say, okay, let's go up together. So what's the solution? The solution, well, again, I don't think it's clean, as a clean cut. I don't have all the Here answers. Here we go, Alan. <laughs> but, but I think we, we, can, we need to start the conversation with understanding why people do the things that they do. Okay. And start talking to them from that place of, I get it. As opposed to, it's wrong, point blank, because life is gray. I wish black and white was so simple, but the truth is it's gray. So even as I'm jokingly explaining to you, a 17-year-old boy, 18-year-old boy manipulating a woman. Mm -hmm. I've been an 18-year-old boy. Doing that. 
Have I? Done? You know if you did that, Alan. I don't think I've done that. You've never manipulated a woman in that I'm way. I'm not gonna say I've never manipulated a woman, but I, I don't think I've manipulated a woman for pussy. Okay. Um, but I understand. What'd you manipulate her for then? That's a whole nother conversation. But but I, I understand why a man would. I understand why a boy would. Um, Cause humans want pleasure. Yeah. And humans are selfish. Yeah, and, and to be real, you could also make the argument a relationship is both people manipulating other uh, the other person for something. There's something the woman is, it's quid pro quo on some level. There's something the woman is getting from it, whether it's the man's status, his money, his time, his affection, his validation. And his, what he's getting is the, the pleasure. And, the, and it's hard for us to say what he's getting is more or less than what she's getting. But we're both getting something. And I think if it's an equal exchange, no harm, no foul. Um, yeah, I agree with that. I don't necessarily like the word manipulation in terms of relationship. If yeah. it, I, don't like, I don't like the word manipulation if it's reciprocal. The problem, I think, is when... Asymmetrical. Yeah, when it's, I'm selling you something that's not true because I want to get this. And so I'm making you think that it's reciprocal, but I know that... Listen, I disagree with it. I'm not a fan of it. <laughs> However, I've been a 17-year-old. So you understand boy. is what I you're saying. I understand it. And similarly, um, I'm sure you can, um, you can empathize with understand a woman who maybe she lacked love as a kid and and now she's manipulating some guy to give her affection maybe it's not even sexual but just being taken care of you know mm-hmm. so again like for men it's the sex mm-hmm. for women it's other things mm-hmm. which might seem not as bad but it could just waste a man's time and money and the whole nine just as much as this woman um you know giving him pussy so that brings me to my actual last question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I know that Kevin Samuels used to talk about this, about how men need to stop giving women non-sexual attention mm-hmm. um, because basically she don't she don't want you and right. she's wasting your time, basically. Right. right, Do you think that, one, so it's like a, this might be a three-part question. One, do you think that men and women can be strictly friends and then if so, do you think that's best practice? And then three, what for that to work, what would need to happen? <laughs> um, for a man or a woman to... <laughs> I'll answer this two ways. Can there be a friendship? Yes, if one of the two people are not attracted to the other. Okay. Can there be a good friendship? Yes, if neither are attracted to the other. That's tough because in my head, the more you talk to someone and spend time sexually. with someone, sexually, sexually attracted sexually. So, do you do you think that that men can become attracted to someone sexually based on shared viewpoints and like the mental and emotional stuff? Because I think they can. Is it possible for men? Yeah. Yes. Is it plausible? No. So most likely, if he's not initially sexually attracted to you, he won't be. Even if I think, I think, I think more crass men would make that argument for women as well. Like you know, we we've heard the saying: a woman in the first seven seconds of interacting knows whether or not she would sleep with a man. Um, I'm not gonna go that far. But um, for men, going back to the whole bucket thing, either we were hit or we wouldn't. Mm. Now, I think it's also a spectrum of like how eager we would be to hit. Right. Which also depends on like his experience and yeah. like if he's still a 17-year-old horn dog mentally. Um, but, but yeah, as far as like platonic relationship where like he's just waiting for his opportunity. <laughs> Or, or she thinks that one day he'll see me. Yeah. Um, the waiting for the opportunity can happen more often than the one day he'll see me. If you did the girl, he wouldn't fuck mm. typically. Men, men, men are men are pretty fixed sexually, whereas women, you know, women tend to be more sapiosexual. Right. And and more. Yeah. Fle- I think women are flexible generally, and goes back to the whole race yeah. thing. Um, 
But uh, yeah, for, for, for a good relationship, either, like I said, there is no sexual attraction or, and that doesn't mean they're not attractive. Right. Right. Because I think right. there's a distinction between attractive and attracted. Yeah. People I, I know who are attractive, but I'm not attracted to them. I agree. I agree with that. Yeah. So you think they can be? Yeah, if they're not attracted to each other, yeah. So do you think that it would be the same, like, um, because I think that that relationship would need to look different. Like, I don't think it's, I don't, I don't believe in it. The male, female platonic, I just don't, I don't believe in it. I just think if y'all were friends, like how I'm friends with my best friend, like my female best friend, and we went to dinner together and we went like to the movies together. You'll fall in love with that nigga. Yeah. yeah. I, just, I think, <laughs> I, don't, fall in love with that nigga. I don't believe, I don't believe you, that that's we've, possible. We've actually seen some women actually fall in love with their gay best friend. I've seen, I've heard that too, actually. Yeah, and it, again, it goes back to. Uh, men process love differently than women. Like women start with the feelings and how does he make me feel? Um, but that's not how men are wired. And the first right of refusal is given to what I fuck. And I think the last right of refusal, actually, if I'm being honest, is given to how does she make me feel? Like the how does she make me feel takes you from just some girl to my girl or my wife. 